So uh, we were told we had 30 minutes, and there's only 10 left before the end of our time. So we're going to speak three times faster than usual. And uh, just in case you were confused at all, I'm Peter Dunker, and he's Peter Bush. When Peter gave me the title back in March to uh, prepare some slides, uh, I didn't think it was very, um, I don't know, it's not catchy. So I thought I'd come up with a catchy title. And uh, I came up with out with the old in with the new. But when the first time we made the presentation in Weymouth four weeks ago, I thought, oh, that's such a terrible catchy title because it could be misinterpreted. Out with the old growth forest and in with the new forest? That's not what we meant. And then I thought, well, maybe it's out with the old geezers who give presentations <laughs> and in with the new. Uh, but it doesn't mean that. It means out with the old growth forest policy and in with a new old growth forest policy. So just, just so you know, that's what um, old growth, or out with the old in with the new stands for. Uh, you might wonder why uh, I am uh, part of this presentation. Uh, Peter and I have been working on the old growth file for about 20 years. Actually, I've been doing old growth forests since before Simon Budabazi was born. <laughs> so um, I've been working with the province uh, for the last few years on a team that was developing this new policy. So Peter and I feel like we're joined at the hip uh, on this uh, subject matter. We want to cover a series of questions in the next 10 minutes or so. I see the countdown clock still says I have 27 minutes, but I've not. Lunch is, is, is at hand. So, why is old growth forest so special? First of all, why did we need an updated policy? The old one was 2012, that's tough not so long ago. What was the process to get an update done? What does the new policy say that's different from the old one? Uh, what's in the policy for woodland owners, which is probably the, the punchline you're waiting for? And what do the next four and a half years hold? And you'll, you'll discover what four and a half years means uh, when we get to the end of the presentation. So why is old growth forest so special? It's special for two reasons. One is we cherish them so awfully much. We just adore old growth forests for a range of forest values. And they're now so rare. And I'm going to talk about the diverse range of values. Peter might address the issue of rarity. Peter and I worked together uh, on a project with the Bow Water Mercy Paper Company, uh, which wanted to uh, uh, have a more uh, nuanced policy for the conservation of old growth on its own land. And so we mounted a project, um, a research project, with a bunch of grad students and so on. And we not only studied the ecological side of old growth, we also studied the social side of old growth. And two of my students were working on that um, concept. And uh, we ended up um, developing what we call a framework for old growth forest values. And so we have a paper out uh, from some years ago uh, with the three of us as, as co-authors on this forest values framework for old growth. We started with the picture on the left, which we found in the literature, which was a structure for trying to understand and categorize forest values. And we quickly discovered, after talking to people in the woods, in, in Bowwater Mersey uh, territory in the west, of the province, that that was totally inadequate for us to really understand why people cherish old growth forests. So our framework is on the right hand side. And um, you can see that it has a dramatically expanded non-material values uh, spectrum associated with old growth forest values. And the, and the terms under those four columns of ethical, sociocultural, spiritual, and aesthetic, they all come from the notes and the conversations with citizens of Nova Scotia who went with us to the woods to talk about old growth forests in the West. So why did we need a new policy? Well, uh, the Leahy uh, exercise took place back in 2007, 2018. I confess that I was one of Bill's uh, chief advisors and uh, I helped Bill um, understand or misunderstand the situation with respect to old growth uh, in the province and helped him write his recommendation in the independent review and it said uh, things like this we need to implement ecological forestry okay that's going on we need accelerated and improved data collection yep that's starting to go on we need to reconsider the area proportion targets we need to add old forest restoration targets 
and we need to develop a silvicultural manual for old forest restoration. Gee, I wish I knew then what I knew, know today about the way we manage old growth forests uh, in Nova Scotia, because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have advised Bill along several of these um, items. And you'll understand that once Peter tells you what the new policy has uh, in it. So now I give it over to uh, Dr. Bush, and he will lead you through the rest of the presentation. Well, thank you, Peter, very efficient. I've never heard you talk so efficiently in my 20 years. <laughs> That's great. A whole bunch of letters behind those names. Uh, what do they stand for? Well, uh, P that is piled higher and deeper. Uh, BS, I probably don't need to explain that, and if I do, we'll do it at lunch. MS, probably the same as BS. And an MREM, -E one of the students said it means a master of everything that really matters. And I'm sure it's something else. Oh, speaker? I, they can hear me. Yeah, they can hear me. All right, good. All right, Peter's in the middle there. Move that down. The other two Peters are much taller than this Peter. Better looking too. Better looking too. I saw said out with the old. Oh, this one? Yeah. So, how did we get to uh, the update? We did some uh, public consultation, staff consultation, targeted stakeholders, maybe some individuals in the room. At that time, our department actually uh, was separate from Energy and Mines. Now we're together. Um, so we talked to them. Big about uh, consultations, of course. Um, we had 128 submissions. It doesn't sound like a lot, but for government, it was, we were excited. Lots of, lots of reading to do, that was good. Um, and, and Professor Nagy was also sort of doing a review of the practice as well. <clears throat> so what does the policy do different? It supports the overall approach to ecological force we heard a lot about by prioritizing biodiversity of these uncommon and unique ecosystems. It fits into to the triad zone. Uh, my deputy Karen was talking about the triad zone, and these are truly embedded in the conservation zone. It incorporates new science, local expertise, traditional knowledge, and it supports voluntary conservation approach on private land. So that's what we've been practicing for years in Nova Scotia, um, and this policy continues that. Well, the first thing you'll notice, the obvious name change. Peter mentioned uh, the old, it was called old forest. There was some confusion between what's the difference between an old forest and an old growth and mature forest. We just focus on old growth and that one term. This second bullet is really probably the biggest part of it. There was, it, it was in the old policy, um, but it's more clear now. Our old growth policy, the provincial old growth policy, conserves all old growth on Crown land. I was pausing there for dramatic. Okay? All growth on Crown land. So again, the policy does not apply to uh, private land, but on Crown land, all is, is, is protected under this policy. The policy also has a revised definition that is more ecologically based. Dave was talking about uh, something about the FEC and FEC training and follows that approach. It also has a clear definition on managed stands. So the simplest definition of old growth, people ask me, is it's relatively old and relatively undisturbed. So we've got a definition for relatively old, um, but relatively undisturbed. We kind of went back 30 years, saying if there's any treatment in a stand, it might be valuable for that bird or that bird we saw with the species at risk, but it's not necessarily old growth. Okay. Stronger language about removal. We have a, 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 a place in the policy that gives the minister an option if there is a twinning of the highway on our way here. We saw that's important. That provincial infrastructure saves lives. We might have to sacrifice a few hectares of old growth in those cases. The policy gives the minister space, but also gives them direction to be added to that. So there's it's nice language there. Lots of clarification for our responsibilities. Stronger language on uh, renewal. So we set the renewal at five years. So Peter mentioned four and a half years. We're half a year into it. Uh, so we have four and a half years to see how this policy is working, see what those coaches think, and then uh, go into a renewal process. And of course, stronger language support uh, private land conservation. 
What does this policy uh, do for uh, woodland owners? Well, it talks about a few things. Ah, too many words on the screen, but what the heck. Let's go through a few of them. My stomach is starting to growl, so bear with me. We've got a few more slides. Um, we are going to identify some mechanisms for um, private land conservation of old growth. And again, some of these already exist for our protected areas approaches, and you've heard uh, some of them before. But I, I broke them down into sort of a couple of key categories. If you want to keep the land, there's easements, there's donations, there's right of first refusal, volunteer uh, stewardship. If you want dollar gains, then there's some of the, the carbon uh, accounting we talked about. You can sell land, you can exchange it with government, you can do a split receipt sale. There's a few options that you know we're gonna help identify those. Working collaboratively with the land trust. Um, C is about including it as a priority in our crown land purchases. We have a million or so a, a year that we do uh, private land purchases, fitting it in there. Some of the other things are about data collection and, and, and sharing of information. Next four and a half years, what does it hold? We're going to review the policy. We're going to um, develop monitoring and reporting protocols. Um, public accounting for the old growth forest coordinator. Who's up here? You. Oh, shit. Okay. I guess I got some reports to write, uh, as well as spend time in the woods. Um, we're going to try to make some improvement with private land for sure. Again, it's all volunteer coordination with our sister department on protected areas. The idea is that these old growth areas on crown land will count towards our 20% targets. Um, increase on finding, one of the things that uh, the review of forestry practice talked about accelerating, looking for, for old growth on crown land. So old growth on crown land, when it says that it's all protected, it's not only what we know, it's what we don't know, right? So how do we, how, how do we find those things we don't know? When we do forest management, forest treatments, we do these PTA assessments or assessments before we harvest, and their part of that assessment is to identify and make sure that what they're harvesting is not old growth. So we find it as we're going to do a development on the land including uh, wind projects, okay, and research. All right, there's some coral lichen on that uh, <clears throat> tree. I think that was near um, the Bell property in Cape Breton. Um, nice, huge balsam fir. Some websites for you to see, some story maps. Uh, I think there's a video of Peter Dunker on there on YouTube if you want to talk about old growth and old growth forest policy. And there's also some links in our, our story map. This is a, a nice sort of a website interaction. Of sometimes you find something really exciting. And as part of this policy development, I had some students, they were out doing research, trying to identify um, some approaches that we might take. I got a text from one of the students saying, I think I found a tree that's 500 years old. And I said to her, well, I'm not sure. You better go ask the forester to recount. Because we had never found a tree 500 years old in Nova Scotia before, or New Brunswick, for that's from New Brunswick. So it turns out it was a 532 year old eastern hemlock um, in Halifax County, and uh, the oldest tree in the Maritimes. Um, and we found another one in that stand as well. And that stand uh, that Megan found um, is protected under this policy in the policy, not in a protected area, a wilderness area, nature reserve, it's crown land under this policy. And the interesting loop is it was set aside originally by uh, Bow Water John Moore um, back in, in, in the 90s. And so they set it aside, private land owner put it aside under their policy. When we bought their land, we, the citizens of Nova Scotia, bought their land from them. Uh, we got a, a nice little gift, the old street in Nova so well, there we go. Nice little story. All right. That's it. How did I do? I saved some time. Yes. I, I saved some time. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.